A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Just as from the heavens the rain and the snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows, and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but shall, not, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I send it. Verbum Domini From all their distress, God rescues the just. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces not be blushed with shame. When the poor one call out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. The Lord has eyes for the just and ears for their cry. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy the remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit he saves. Dominus Fobiscum, et Spiritu Tuo, Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundo Matteo, Gloria Tibi et Omne. Jesus said to his disciples, In praying, do not babble like the pagans, who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This is how you are to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If you forgive men their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive men, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. Verbum Domini. Today, we see in the first reading from the prophet Isaiah this reflection on the word of God. And we're told that as the rain and snow fall, 
and then return and through evaporation back up to the heavens, they, through this cycle, you know, the earth is watered, making it fertile, the seed can grow. And so, and so the word is like that, God's word, my word, uh, Isaiah tells us, shall do my will, achieving this end from which I sent it. Come down from above and engendering and imparting, giving life to us here below. Pope Benedict, in his recent address on the scriptures, Verbum Domini, on the word of God, which I'm going to draw a lot of reflections from in this homily, he says this, that Jesus Christ is this definitive and effective word which came forth from the Father and returned to him, perfectly accomplishing his will in the word, in the world. So the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and God speaks his word humanly and so entered into time, you know, in Jesus Christ. And Jesus, of course, gives us divine life, making all things new, you know, returning all of creation to the Father in and through him. In the prologue of John's Gospel, we hear that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Word exists before creation. The Word is the eternal Word, the second person of the Trinity. And through him and without him was not anything made that was made. That the Word is the foundation of all reality. Everything that exists does not exist by chance, but is willed by God and part of his plan. In Christ, we have eternal life. In him, the fullness, I mean, this creation finds its fullness, finds its destiny in him. All things hold together in him. The, the very basis of reality. And also, we're told in the prologue, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. If we build our lives on this word, we build our lives on rock. We had that reading the other day, the house built on the word is like the house built on rock as opposed to a house built on sand. The temptation is to build our lives upon you know, chasing after possessions, pleasure, and power, but these things can't fulfill us. We're made through him. We're made in the image and likeness of God, and we can only find our, our fulfillment in him and creation finds its deepest meaning in him. You know, oftentimes uh, we get, we're presented with the idea that Christians are somehow missing out or not living life to the full. But if this creation comes from God, it's made through his word, Christians are at the heart of reality. They're at the heart of this fullness that creation was intended to have. So in defining what this means, what the word means, first we say, the logos, the term in Greek uh, used for the word in John's prolo prologue, means uh, refers to, in the first place to the eternal word, the second person of the Trinity. It also refers to the word that became flesh, Jesus Christ, born of the Virgin Mary. He is truly the word of God, one and the same person. So the word of God here refers to the person of Jesus, the eternal son of the Father made man. The word of God is also referred to as the gospel preached by the apostles and handed on in the church's living tradition. And the word is the sacred scriptures, the Old and New Testaments. We venerate the scriptures, though as the catechism makes the point and this document, recent document on the scriptures, that Christianity is not a religion of the book. It is the religion of the word of God not of a written and mute word, but of the incarnate and living word. Again, this document, Verbum Domini, says, quote, that the word of God precedes and exceeds sacred scripture. Nonetheless, scripture, as inspired by God, contains the divine word in an altogether singular way. It goes on to quote from Vatican II that the books of sacred scripture Teach firmly, faithfully, and without error that truth which God, for the sake of our salvation, wished to see confided to the sacred scriptures. And we find that necessary truth for our salvation in the sacred scriptures. The word of God in these different ways that I mentioned renews the church when we encounter that word, when we receive it. Renews the church and gives her life. 
the word is a sacred, it, the word is a constant source of renewal. So God speaks to us and he shares his love with us so that we might have life in abundance. And again, Pope Benedict writes that the church is built upon the word of God. She is born from and lives by that word, a constant source of renewal. Of course, Jesus Christ gives us that life and when we encounter and receive him, we're renewed, we're, we share in his life. And the entire Christian life is marked by this encounter with Jesus, we follow him, you know, become his disciples, listen to his teachings, you know, have faith in him, and he gives us life. Through his word, God the Father speaks to us and gives us eternal life, divine life. We hear in the Gospels that the today's Gospel from Matthew that the disciples, you know, approach Jesus and want to know how to pray, and he tells them. And this is a good meditation for Lent because in Lent, you know, we practice penance primarily through prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. That we, he tells them, you know, not to, to pray as the pagans do. They babble on. And this was a method, you know, at the ancient times of, they thought that the, the pagans thought that they could manipulate their gods by these babbling of words by just this avalanche of words that they could obtain what they wanted. Now sometimes people will accuse the Catholic Church as saying, well, you see, you guys shouldn't have all these rote prayers, memorized prayers and things. But at the same time, Jesus goes on the next few verses to teach the Our Father, a memorized you know, formula for our prayer. So he's not, as such, discounting you know, having a set prayer to say. But he, he tells us that, you know, it's not a form of manipulation. We always seek the Lord, seek his will. You know, we seek to, to listen. And we're seeking, you know, good things from our Heavenly Father. We're not trying to control him in some way. So prayer is an encounter. And I just wanted to go back to that, that document on the scriptures because there's a wonderful section there about Lexio Divina. And this simply means this prayerful reading of the scriptures. So if, you know, if the word of God renews us, we should spend time you know, in the sacred scripture, scriptures, which is a special place of the presence of his word. So we prayerfully read the scriptures. It's good to study the scriptures, but we also need to go to the scriptures in prayer, asking God you know, what they mean and, and receiving good things you know, the truths necessary for our salvation through that word. So it's this prayerful approach, and it's absolutely fundamental in the spiritual life. He writes in his document, the Verbum Domini, the word of God is at the basis of all authentic Christian spirituality, at the basis. We speak of it as the soul of theology. You know, St. Thomas considered the Summa as a meditation, as an explanation of the word of God. So that is the very, the very basic basis of the Christian life. We had a visiting priest here one time that uh, did some work, I think, on the C at the CDF, the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith, with Cardinal Ratzinger when he was the head of it. And he said Cardinal Ratzinger carried around a Greek copy of the New Testament. And he had this old book, and it was well-worn. He oftentimes had it with him and would you know, pray and meditate with the scriptures, you know, continuously. So what, it's a good example for us. Again, in this document, this instruction on how uh, to perform Lexio Divina, he quotes from Origen. He says, devote yourselves to the Lexio, this reading of the divine scriptures. Apply yourself to this with perseverance. Do your reading with the intent of believing in and pleasing God. If during the Lectio you encounter, you encounter a closed door, knock and it will be open to you. Have you ever had that frustration? You know, you read the scriptures, you say, what does it mean? What's God saying? Sometimes it seems contradictory as other parts of the scripture, or you, it seems veiled to you. Ask him, ask him in prayer, you know, what it means. In prayer, we ask and we also listen to God. Again, Origen says, seek and you will find, knock, and it will be open to you. But he also, you know, the, 
quoting the scripture, the scriptures also say, ask and you shall receive. So we seek, we find through study and through reading the, the word of God, but we also need to ask this meaning that the Holy Spirit you know, can enlighten us. Pope Benedict, uh, in this document, he gives a method for this prayerful reading of the scriptures. And he says, I would like here to review the basic steps of this procedure. And this blessed my life, and it's nothing uh, new or fancy, but it's simple, and it, it helped me in my own prayer life. He says the first step, you know, it opens with, begin, with reading uh, of the text of Scripture, which leads to a desire to understand its true content. So we read and we ask ourselves, what does the biblical text say in itself? What's the literal meaning? You know, what is the, the, the text saying? He says, without this, there is always a risk that the text will become a pretext for never moving beyond our own ideas. You know, we're always imputing our own ideas. We're, leading it, we're reading it through the lens of our own, um, own egotism or whatever. You know, we can sort of force it to say something it doesn't say. Next comes meditation, which asks, what does the biblical text say to us? What does it say to us? Here, each person individually, but also as a member of the community, must ask himself or herself, be moved and challenged. Following this prayer uh, comes the prayer, oratio, which asks the question, what do we say to the Lord in response to his word? So what is, what's the literal meaning of the text? What's the text say to us? And then comes this prayerful part of, you know, what do we say? So this would be our petitions, our intercessions, our thanksgiving, our praise, our adoration, you know, our, maybe our sorrow for sin. You know, we're speaking to God in this part. And then finally, he says, Lexio Divina concludes with contemplation, during which we take up as a gift from God his own way of seeing and judging reality. And we ask ourselves, what conversion of mind, and, of, of mind, heart, and life is the Lord asking of us? And this can be very powerful. Lord, what conversion do you want of me? How do I apply this word to my life? Where do I need to change? And meditation always connects us to the concrete reality of our life. You know, it demands, conversion demands a real change, you know, that we make a determined effort to conform our lives to the word of God. He quotes from St. Paul, you know, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may prove what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. All right, I think we are infected by worldliness much more than we think. You know, it's in the very air we breathe. And we constantly need to be going back to the source of Christianity to be renewed. You know, encountered in our prayer life, and our sacramental life, you know, we receive that word and it transforms us. So contemplation, this gift of renewal, we could say, aims at creating within us, <clears throat> creating within us a a, a truly wise and discerning vision of reality as God sees it and at forming within us the mind of Christ. The word of God appears here as a criterion for discernment. He quotes St. Paul, you know, it's living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces to the division of soul and spirit. So that word breaks into our life and, and, and brings about a conversion. Finally, he says, the reading of the word of God sustains us on our journey of penance and conversion, enables us to deepen our sense of belonging to the church, and helps us to grow in familiarity with God. As St. Ambrose puts it, when we take up the sacred scriptures in faith and read them with the church, we walk once more with God in the garden. I love that expression. You know, we we hear that in Genesis, right? In the cool of the day, Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve walked with God. After sin, they hid from God. Uh, but in the scriptures, we can walk with him once again and meditate upon his words and receive the fullness of life you know, that he wants to give us. And that could be a transforming word that leads us to a deeper conversion during this season of Lent. 